Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted, that wasted at noon. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, for there shall not come thy feet. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the Lord, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. There shall no evil be all, neither shall any plague come not thy way. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He said, Call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver him in honor. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Yeah. Thus ends the reading of God's word. I read Psalms 91, verses 1 through 6. The word of God is already blessed. I pray that the lesson of the ears and the word of God. We're going to have a prayer for the people. Amen. Let us continue to look to the Lord in prayer. Let the glory of the Lord rise upon us. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Father God, we come before you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, give me honor to you. Pray that you forgive me of my sins, and my iniquities, that I may pray to you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, pray that you come and fill this house with your spirit, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fill this sanctuary. Fill our hearts, Lord. Let us hear a word from you today, Lord. Let us hear a word that we would share with others, Lord. If it comes through song or through scripture or through preaching, Lord, God, be with us. Because we thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, God, we thank you for salvation, Send it to only the only begotten Son here, Jesus, down the cross for our sins, that we may have a right to the tree of life, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for protecting us, keeping us. Lord God, we just thank you for every suffering that we are going through, whether it's good or bad. But we know all good things come from you. 
to know God, we just thank you for covering us with your love, for keeping us, Lord. Lord God, we pray that you bless every person here, every family here, that we may go out and share the word with others, that they may call on you to be saved, Lord. Lord God, fill us up with your word. Let your spirit lead us in the way that we should go. And Lord God, bless each person here. Bless our pastor. One that you have sent here to help shepherd us into your presence, Lord. Lord God, come and help. Use him, Lord. Keep your hold on him, Lord. Lord, if there's anything that should not be within him, remove it, Lord. Fill him up with your glory, that he may spread it to us as we go along from day to day. Lord God, we just thank you for this service. We thank you, Lord, that we have a place to come to. Lord God, right now we pray that your spirit will continue to drive in us, leading us, directing us where we should go. Keeping us comfortable all the way. And we may shout and give you the glory, Lord. We ask you this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
See, Miss Lois, she was doing pretty good. And we served her at community. When that did, she was in high spirits. And y'all who know the words of prayer continue to pray for the sick and afflicted. And I'd like to let you know that Lewis brought eight tickets for the dinner Amen. for someone. Amen. Thank you. Amen. He already worked there. All right. You don't have to figure it out. Our part is to just pray and watch the miracles happen. Conference, March 22nd to March 25th in Richmond, Virginia. Anyone wishing to attend, please contact the church office. Registration has been paid in full for the entire, entire church. However, if you're planning on staying and you wish to stay overnight, you have to make your own hotel arrangements. On Tuesday, March 21st, Registration has been paid for, but again, we did not list anyone individually. So if you're planning on attending, let the church office know and we'll get that information down to them. Amen. 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 On Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. is the IPBC Joint Board meeting. That's the deacons and the trustees coming together to conduct church business. Amen. Then on Saturday, March 25th at 10 a.m. will be the general church meeting. Somebody say amen today. Y'all want me to read that again? Saturday, March 25th at 10 a.m. will be the church meeting. The rescheduled book club meeting will be on April the 1st at 10 a.m. All are welcome and you can see the flyer in the vestibule for book information on Thursday, April the 6th at 6.30 p.m. Israel Baptist Church will be in revival right all the way across the street. And our very own Bishop Matthew will be delivering the revival message. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes, uh, that's the last hour uh, associated with uh, Bishop Staples Church. Amen. Friday, April 7th at 12 p.m. is Good Friday service. April ministry fish fry will be immediately following the service. Pre-orders are mandatory. Let's get to that again. Good Friday service, we're going to come to the sanctuary, get our shadow, get our seven last sayings, we can understand what Christ did and who he is for us, and immediately following, if your stomach needs filling, not your spirit, that's what we fed. If your stomach needs filling, you can get your fish dinner immediately after the service, but you have to put in your free order. And the order forms are in the best of you. Amen. Saturday, April 8th at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. IBTC Women's Ministry, the Jericho Walk Fundraiser. It is five dollars per lap whether you decide to walk on the inside or on the outside. There will be prizes and refreshments. Amen. Same with the Stars Dinner and Concert has been rescheduled to April 22nd at 3 p.m. The tickets are $50 for singles, $75 for couples. All prior ticket purchases will be honored. If you are interested, please see Reverend Karen Jumman or Lady Felicia Carver for tickets. And Felicia, she is actually, that's her name again. <laughs> Lady Carver's over there waving her hands. Amen. Do we have any visitors to get out this morning? Anyone first, second, third time worshiping with us? We ask that you would stand at this time. Amen. 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 Since there's a few of you, I'm going to ask that you to give us your name and your church home. If you have one. I'm sorry. My name is Angela Brown, and I remember of the Bethel AME Church in Congress, Georgia. What are you doing? Conyers. Conyers. Yeah. In Georgia. It's right outside of Atlanta. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. My name is Louisa Carroll. And right now I don't have a church home, but I'm here. And I was with Alan Patmos since there was no ministry. Hey, hey. 
Amen. that we need to leave behind. 
We've engaged in some disgusting relationships. We've engaged in disgusting people and places and things. Some things we should have left behind a long time ago. But they still linger on because we just won't let them go. And all of us here today need to let some stuff go. In order that we might worship God in spirit and in truth. The whole movement of this text now will do Max Keller. The whole movement of this text is about worship. How we ought to worship God. And how our hearts ought to be ready for worship. And that none of us can say that, oh, I worship him at the Isle of Patmos Church, but I can't worship him at the Real Israel Church. I worship him in my church in D.C., but I don't worship in the church in North Carolina. I'm going to worship him in North Carolina, but I'm not going to worship him in D.C. I worship him in Alabama, but I'm not going to worship him in D.C. This text is about true worship. And true worship says, Jesus told this woman, if you read, start that about the third or fourth verse coming down, you discover what Jesus was telling her was this. It doesn't matter if you worship in the mountains All right. or in Jerusalem. There's going to come a day when you just better worship it while you can. Right. Real worship yeah. is, takes place anytime we get together. All right. That's worship when Christ is the center of our worship, when God is our focus and our praise is aimed at him and not at us, that is real worship. We are not supposed to worship each other. We're not supposed to worship. Come on now. Presidents of auxiliaries, pastors of deacons, or any of that. I don't worship individuals. Our worship ought to be designed whereby we're worshiping God and not man. And when you're worshiping God, it does not matter the place that you worship. What's important is that you do worship. Got to give God his praise. Got to give God his authority. We must give God his proper place in our worship. Come on now. And in this passage of scripture, that the conversation taking place. And the only way we can get to the right mindset to worship, it takes confrontation. Because Jesus confronted this woman by asking her, first of all, can you give me a drink of water? And she said, why are you asking me for a drink of water? When you know that Jews and Samaritans don't get along. Why would you want to drink from my water pot? And then she goes on to tell him, well, you don't even have a water pot to draw water with. So I know you ain't going to drink out of what I have. And Jesus tells her, look, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for some water. That when Jesus comes into our presence, yes. 
He brings with him everything we need All right. to change, be developed, and be an inspiration to other people. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He tells her, look, I'm asking you for a drink, but I want to see what your response is going to be. Because I need you to know something. I already know who you are. And the reason why I know that's what he was thinking because he asked her, where your husband is. <laughs> and she tells him, I don't have a husband. You say, I know you're bad guy. <laughs> and the one you're with right now is not your husband. And in biblical times, any time you would lay with a man or a woman, that person became your husband or your wife. Amen. I need that to sleep in. Amen. Because when those two came together, yeah. something happened. And by lying with that person, the exchanging of those fluids created a relationship. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I see it. Mm. Yeah. That DNA was exchanged. Yeah. And I need us to understand that this woman mm. had been with at least six different men. Because she did understood how much Jesus knew about her. And it's not until we are confronted with our sin that we're ready to change. Sometimes we have to be confronted with sin. So that we can change. Yeah, right. We're not interested in changing what we do, how we do it, until it gets exposed. And Jesus exposed her shortcomings and her sin. That's confrontation. She could have really gotten upset. And said, I ain't giving you no drink of water now, tomorrow, or ever. You all up in my business and my wax, and you telling me about my life and how I have messed up my life. And I'm coming to the well at 2 o'clock in the day, which is the hottest part of the day, to get water so nobody else would see me. Because I'm already embarrassed about what I've done with my life. Yeah, and yet you want to come here now and expose me. Right. But Jesus did not expose her to the world. He just exposed her to herself. All right. yeah. Everything is not for everybody. Something you and the Lord. Confrontation leads to conversation. She was confronted and then she could talk with Jesus honestly and openly about her behavior and her lifestyle. Sometimes we're not ready to get that conversation yeah, yeah. of how we messed up, yeah. how we fallen short. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that the good news is all yeah. have sinned. Yeah. Yeah. I've fallen short of the glory of God. None of us yeah. are perfect. Yeah. Right. 
Because all of us got some stuff yes. we can leave behind. Yes. Some demons, some devils, some personalities, yes. some problems, yes. some shortcomings, some mess. This mess, that mess, I mess, that mess. All of us got some mess yes. that we can leave behind. Yes. Yes. None of us are perfect. Not one. And that's why I can have a conversation with God. And tell him all about my struggles. Tell him about how sin had fallen short. And ask him for forgiveness. Ask him for grace and mercy. Appeal to his humanity because he has to have humanity and we have to have humanity. Amen. Amen. Have to appeal to his love and tell him, Lord, you know, didn't mean to mess up, but I messed up just the same. Yeah. It wasn't in the design. It wasn't in the program. Because you didn't have a bad program. I just got off the page and decided to do it my way. And when I did it my way, I messed up. I came short of what you called me to do. God, I need you now to help me as I'm going through this conversation with you yes. so that I can change my living condition. She says after she was exposed and her living conditions were discussed the woman was converted. How do you know she was converted? Because she ran into the city. Telling everybody to come see the man that told me all about myself. I know she was converted. Jesus turned her heart around from what she was in to where she was going. And she was not a Jew, she was a Samaritan. She was mixed. Yeah, we was called, we was called mixed people. Half this and half that. A high 57, they you know just mixed. <laughs> Not all or anything, but some of everything. Yeah. Mixed. Yeah. Half black, half white. Trouble had no trouble. She was mixed. And she was mixed up. But after she met Jesus, she got turned around. Yeah. To the grace, she got fixed up. Because she was once messed up. And now she's fixed up. Ready to run for Jesus. Anytime we get fixed up, we can run to Jesus and tell the world what Jesus does in our life. He is still turning people around and fixing us up. He's not done yet. Because as long as we're on earth, we can be fixed up. Yeah. Twenty seven said then she then the disciples returned. Surprised to see him talking with this woman. They didn't ask any questions. They were surprised to see Jesus talking to this woman from Samaria. 
surprise because of her nationality. Surprise because we didn't have the kind of conversations. But they were at a mutual place. They were at Jacob's well. And the well was deep. The text says that. And I need us to understand that deep well, the deeper well is going to the water. And when we understand that we have to have cold water to quench our thirst. Room temperature water is all right. But something about that cold water. The boys by our song talk about cooling water. The colder the water, the fresher the taste. And as this woman told him about how deep the bell was, not that Jesus didn't know. I kept that bell. Why did you mention that the water, the well was deep? It was deep because sin oftentimes runs deep. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. And sometimes it takes some cool water to wash away the burning of sin. Then verses 29 through 30 is celebration. You got confrontation, conversation, conversion, and celebration. Celebration, forgetting the weight of your water pots. Forgetting the weight of sin. Putting your past behind you. Moving from old memories of yesterday releasing the old stuff preparing for a new transition preparing to worship God in spirit and in truth I don't know about you but I'm ready to worship God at a deeper level, deep on the inside, where the water is fresh and cool. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad the Lord is on my side. Yeah, He's still fighting our battle. against all odds. Folk counted us out. But grace and mercy showed up. One on the right and the other on the left and lifted us out of the muck and the fiery clay. Put our feet upon a rock and now we're standing on the promised land of our Tomorrow, but I know who holds 
looking for a church home. I want you to come back home. The doors are open. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. Is your salvation secure right now? Do you understand who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for you? Do you need a good Bible-based teaching, preaching church?
that our Sunday attire. But God, there's still hearts that are broken that need to be mended. There's still trouble everywhere. And everywhere there's trouble. God, we need your grace, we need your mercy, we need your peace, we need your power, we need you to show up in our lives. As you met the woman at the well, meet us at our will. Deep is our need to hear your word. Deep is our need to be healed, converted. Deep is our need to be prospered. Deep is our need in this country, oh God, for a safe place for black people to live without the threat of danger, without the threat of being shot. God, deep is our need. They have our deepest bowls filled. God, you blessed us. You kept us. But now, God, we need a safe haven where we can be protected from the enemies from without and from within. God, many of us are on different kinds of medication. <clears throat> just God, just to be healed. And so God, we ask you right now, bring about the healing that we need. And then God, many of us are still yet facing operation. The God, we need you to show up. In that operating room, God, show up in that hospital. God, we ask your blessing on all those in the hospitals. Those who had operation, Sister Welker, God, who had an operation. She broke her thigh bone, God, when she fell. Ask your blessing on her. God, bless Deacon Cockrell. God, I love you. Bless Brother and Sister Lord, who've been faithful, God, over a few things. Not all. Need you to show up in the line of the members of our Baptist, Baptist Church. God, turn some things around. Bring some healing, bring some joy, bring some peace, bring some fellowship. God, bring your that we might worship in spirit and truth. God, destroy those negative yokes that have held us separated from each other. And then God, add to the kingdom for the kingdom's sake. And then God, we need your help. As we walk day to day, bless those that are working in hospitals and nursing facilities. Those frontliners, oh God, for you know it's not easy. With all this COVID running around, trying to get everybody down, but God, we know that you're going to turn it around. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for keeping us alive. Then God, for these aches and pains we have on our joints, our knees, our backs, our inner bones, God, take that off right as way. God, heal us. Give us strength to run this Christian race. And then God, put cancer on delay. Don't let it take us out. Put it on the lane. Because we hear God to bless your name. Put our disease on the lane. High blood pressure, diabetes. God, put it all on the lane. And then God, for some of us, put it on the lead. 
Let it all bound us anymore. Let God get us out of the steroids that we have to take. Just to get up in the morning. Just to walk one more day. God, let us see our children graduate. Our grandchildren graduate. God, fix it for us. Like you fix your mother lady at the well. You turn it around. Now God, turn it around for us. God, we're looking for victory in 2023. We're looking for joy in 2023. But God, we know you have it in the hymn of your God. The victory is for us. In the name of Jesus. God, prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies to be in a living sanctuary. But God, we know you're able. We know you're willing. Now God, bless this church to grow numerically and spiritually in the name of the master's name of Jesus. Then God, bless our chairman. We give you thanks to him. And then God, we're here for this church meeting. Be there, God. Show up. Be powerful. Be prolific. Be hopeful. And then God, we pray for the livelihood of every church open in your name. Bring about the joy we need and the fellowship we need between sister churches. Then God, when this race down here is over, and we'll be called up to meet you in the twinkling of an eye, God will be ready in the name.